A common use case for telephony integration into web applications is verifying a user's telephone number, or alternatively things like two-factor authentication to confirm logins or bank transactions. One approach to this problem is to call the user and ask them to enter a code on their telephone which is presented on their screen. For phone number verification, we obviously ask for the user's phone number first, and for two-factor authentication and the likes, we would use a number already saved and locked to a user's account. To make this a more slick user experience, once we initiate the call to the user for them to verify their number or action, we can use real-time communication with Pusher to instantly update the page once the verification is complete. To start, we need a simple form to collect our user's telephone number. This specific step would relate to verifying a user's phone number and would probably occur as part of a registration process, as opposed to two-factor authentication. We simply ensure there is a field for telephone number and that the form action points to a file we create to trigger the call. To actually make the call, we need to include our Twilio library and settings as usual. We then need to generate a random number for the user to enter. For simplicity, let's generate a four-digit number. This means that we can set the Twimmel to gather only four digits, and we don't have to worry about numbers that could be less or more than four digits. Ideally, we'd save this number against the user record in a database, but as this is to illustrate the solution, We'll simply pass the code along to Twilio and then back again, which isn't very secure. Let's create a call which will call the user and follow the instructions we will provide in a Twimmel file. It's important for us to pass the code along to this URL so that we can tell the user has successfully entered those four digits that we've asked. Once the call has initiated, we redirect the user to a page which contains the code, again passing the code in the URL so that the user can see the code which they need to enter. So that the user knows what code to enter, we simply display the code on the page. This is the page that we will make dynamic in part 2, with real-time updates on success and failure. We might want to put a loading animated image onto this page to indicate that a call is in progress, along the lines of the Ajax spinning images which are common on many websites. The Twimmel needed to ask the user to verify their phone number is simple. We want to welcome the user to the call and then within the context of a gather ask them to enter their four digit code. As the verification code is 4 digits, we provide the num digits value as 4, which instructs Twilio to redirect the call flow to the action URL once that many digits have been entered. Because the action URL will be doing the verification, we need to again pass along the verification code. This Twimmel script only needs the code so that it in turn can pass it on to our callback URL. Finally, we output the Twimmel. On our process script, we get the digits supplied by the user via the telephone from the digits post variable, and we get the code we expect from the code get variable. Again, this isn't a very secure approach. Ideally, the verification code would be stored in a database, and instead we might pass along the user ID number. If the two numbers match, we thank the user, and at this point we would update our database to log the number as verified. It is here that we need to send a real-time notification to the user, which we will do in part 2. If the code doesn't match, then we will tell them that the code was wrong. Again in part 2, here we will pass the notification to the user's browser that the verification failed. 
Let's try out a call. As you can see, we've been able to quickly put together the logic required to either verify a user's phone number or perform a two-factor authentication check that is our user who was trying to log in or perform an action on the system. Now we can look at using Pusher to enrich the experience with some real-time communication, updating the browser instantly on success or failure.